What's up, guys? Yeah! Thank you so much for joining us in Edmonton this weekend. Thanks for having me. It's awesome to be here. It's a pretty good crowd. How has the fan response been to, to you as Daredevil? Um, I'm, I'm not sure I'm the best person to answer that. Um, you know, look, I've had, it's been um, such an incredible journey, such an amazing part of my life for these last few years. Um, and uh, I could never have um, imagined what this experience would become and what it, what it would feel like. But it's, um, you know, the, the, the people that I've met, at least the ones that I'm, you know, I meet when I come to a place like this, seem very enthusiastic about the show. And, and um, they seem happy with it, I guess. <laughs> um, and of course, you know, that for me, that means I just want to keep doing, making a great show and, and uh, uh, keep putting out great material for you guys. <laughs> have, you had the, yeah. <laughs> have you had the opportunity to do a lot of these conventions? Not a lot. You know, I've done a few um, uh, when, when I get a chance. Um, uh, and I really love coming, and I really love meeting the fans. You know, it's a very cool, it's, it's, it's a really, I, I never even knew about this before um, I did this show. I, I had no kind of idea that uh, these things existed even. Um, and, uh, y you know, from most of my career, I, the, pe the people who tell you how much they like your work are the people who would lie anyway and say that they like your work, like your mom <laughs> and your agent, you know. Um, so, you know, when you come here and you meet people who you've, you've never met before, have got no real motive. Um, and so, when, you know, I, I find it really encouraging to come and listen to you guys and hear what you like about the show and what it meant to you. and. You know you know, the, the, your favorite bits and stuff and it's uh, it's a very nice um it's a nice bit of interaction that really i guess only people who are in genre shows get um because uh yeah I, like i said before i did the show and i hadn't done anything really other than stardust but i didn't know um that these things existed yeah i think in that video the intro video was really great but i think it did a really good job of showing how you had done a lot of period pieces until you kind of transitioned into this superhero genre. Was that a fun change, being able to kind of... Oh yeah, I mean, period pieces, yeah, loads. I'm a British actor, you know, like, <laughs> you know. There was a point in my career where I, I, I literally, I'd never, I'd only ever said, you know, good day, my liege. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was like dying to have a coffee in a scene. You know, I'd only ever had like daggers. <laughs> Maybe wear jeans one yeah, time. Right. <laughs> Uh, but no, the, until very recently, the, the uh, um, and I think it was maybe even Daredevil was like the first job that I'd done that took place post 1950. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. that's wild! I mean, I love Stardust and I love a lot of your period pieces, but I can imagine that you want to change after a little yeah, while. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool to you know have to do something that's modern, wear wear a suit. Yeah. I'd love to hear just a little bit about how you got the role of Daredevil and sort of how you went about preparing to play Matt Murdock because there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of history behind that. Yeah, it's kind of a cool story actually. Um, I, uh, I, from my perspective, I just got a call from my agent saying that they were they were casting for a show, um, uh, and it was all secretive, so I didn't know. They said that they thought it was Daredevil, the show, and I'd never read a comic. I, I had no idea who that was. Um, and so, um, and they never mentioned in the uh, in the email that the character was blind. So for the first audition, I didn't do that. <laughs> um, and then, um, you know, it was a very long process. I went, you know, it went from that audition to a few screen tests, and then I had a Skype session with um, Jeff Loeb, um, uh, the head of Marvel Television, and it, you know, it took about um, two months the whole process, and it was, you know, like a lot of auditioning, a lot of. Uh, chatting and trying to, you know, to, as an actor, you have to go out there and really kind of convince people that you're right for the role. Um, what was interesting is when I finally got the role, um, I was in New York getting ready to start shooting and I had lunch with Joe Casada, who was a um, chief creative officer over at Marvel. And um, I sat down with him and he, and he told me this story that he'd watched um, Boardwalk Empire and basically gone, that's the guy. <laughs> 
Wow. And I never knew that, you know, like this whole time I was like fighting to get this role and someone at the top had already basically decided. <laughs> That's amazing. I always think it's funny that there's this whole like cadre of Brits playing like all these iconic American what is it about? <laughs> it's like I have no idea. There's so many um there's so many English American superheroes. Yeah, it's true. There's something there's something about you guys. You just you get New Yorkers, I guess. That's amazing. I one of my favorite parts of Daredevil and I'm sure a lot of folks in the crowd today are the are the fight scenes. The super realistic fight scenes. Um, what's it? What was it like for you to prepare for those, especially preparing to fight them blindfolded? <laughs> yeah, you know, it was. Um, uh, it, it, that, that's been a, 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 one of the really wonderful aspects of having this job because uh, you know you don't, as an actor, you don't often get to do very much action. Um, and um, I've done a little bit in the past, you know, there's a couple of scenes in Stardust and a couple of scenes in another film that I did, but um, that, it's been a, and it's also not something that you'll get to do for, you know, when you get older, it's typically not very, and also probably you don't want to when you're like 50, you know, um, but uh, so it's been, a, it's, it's tough, you know, it's tough on the body and it's a lot of work and, you know, you can film, 14, 15 pages of dialogue in a day, but if it's an action scene, you know, you'll do 12, 13 hours on one page because it just requires so much uh, um, choreography and so much coverage. It's really just a lot, a lot on your body, and and um, and we have an amazing stunt team. I have an amazing stunt double, but I really enjoy that aspect of it. I really like to get involved as much as I can, and I'm often being told I'm not allowed to do something. Um, but, um, you know, as much as they let me do, basically, I, I, I love that stuff, it's really fun. And I think the stunt team do such a superb job. Do you ever get, like, PTSD when you see a dark hallway now? You yeah. see a dark hallway and like, freak out? <laughs> yeah, well, we did, there was a, we did this scene in ser Series 2 where um, we did this scene, another scene, another fight scene in a, in a corridor. And I think it was just kind of coincidence. It was just the way the choreography worked. It made sense to do it in this corridor. Um, but I saw someone, I'm not really on social media or anything, but I, my, um, one of my work colleagues showed me a, a meme or something, I guess. I don't know what those things are called. But, um, and it basically just said, I, I hope I never meet this guy in a corridor. He gets, well, he said something like, why does this guy get so angry in corridors? <laughs> it was funny. And then you came together with the whole gang for the Defenders. We got some fans in here. Because that's a lot of star power in, in one room for that. Yeah, you know, it was really fun. It's, you know, the show, you guys, some of you have seen the show, it's a bit different from the individual shows. It's a, a little bit more lighthearted, a little bit more fun. Um, and, and I think rightly so. You, I don't think you can have Jessica Jones and Daredevil in a suit and not make a joke. You know, like, she, in order for her to be authentic, she's going to make a joke about that. Um, so we had a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah, this has been something that I know, I, I've known has been coming since I signed on the contract in 2014. So uh, it's, it was really fun to finally get there and to, it's nice to, you know, to also to have Matt make some friends other than Foggy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a bit of a different feeling team than the Avengers, say. Well, it's, it's definitely... Yeah. What do you think everyone's role on the team is? I think the interesting thing for me about that dynamic is that essentially you have four people who have no interest in being part of the team. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're all kind of loners and they're, particularly Matt, I think, and Jessica are quite stubborn. Um, and they want to do things their own way, and they see things quite clearly, but if you don't agree with them, they've got no time for you. Um, and so the, the challenge for the writers and the challenge to make that show was how do you get these four people in a room and, and convince them to stay? Um, and so, you know, that was, that was really the fun aspect of it. And it's just, it's, it's interesting to, to, you know, we've never had, I don't think you've ever had a, a situation where you've, you've had so many hours of television with, with these one, these individual characters, and then finally you get, you know, we did 26 hours of Daredevil before you got to see him interact with these other, you know, superheroes, and so, um, you, at, at that, by that point, you really feel like you know these people, yeah. you know, so it's, yeah, hopefully that makes it more compelling to watch them interact. You know? And you guys are all buds behind the, the scenes, too. Yeah, now, yeah. Yeah, does that make it kind of hard to get stuff done? <laughs> it does, actually, and I often, I feel like, I often felt really bad for the film crew because we would just be chatting so much and laughing and joking around and there'd be times where 
we're like t talking and laughing and then you know that thing happens where suddenly you realize someone's been trying to get your attention for like 20 minutes <laughs> and like I'd, and I'd look up and I'd see the you know the guy who's job the AD the, jo the guy's job it is to kind of make sure that everything runs smoothly and he's just like <laughs> And you're like, I'm so sorry, what do you, what do you want us to do? And he's like, work, maybe? <laughs> uh, let's, we have a couple of lines of audience questions up in the audience. Can we just get the lights up on, on the... Awesome. Why don't we get started over here? Hi. What's up, Charlie? What's up, man? <laughs> uh, for my first question, uh, only question, uh, will the Defenders be expanding their membership in next, their next season? I, you know, I'm so, you can ask another question because this is a really boring answer. I don't know that there will be another defenders. I have no idea if they have plans to do that or not. Um, so, and if I would guarantee, if they were planning it, they would not have told me yet. <laughs> I'm kind of curious if there's like a superhero that you would want to hang out with or work with. You know, it's really tough. I get asked that question, and it's really it's difficult because I normally kind of say, oh, well, I have no idea, but it would be cool if this happened. And then I get a call from my boss the next day saying it's all over the internet that Charlie says this Never is mind. Yeah. Never mind. I forget I asked. Next question. <laughs> Hi. Uh, hello again, Charlie. Hi, man. Um, first, I gotta say, as amazing as the fight sequences are uh, on Daredevil, my favorite bits are definitely the Matt and Foggy scenes. Just because you and Eldon play off of each other so well, like you have such great uh, exchanges. Like my favorite from season one. Uh, don't the answer that be no data. You just asked her where the library is. <laughs> uh, but my my question is, what is your favorite memory of filming with uh, Eldon, and uh, why? Oh man, Eldon's great, and I you know, I can't say enough good things about him. That's a really tough role, by the way. I think Foggy. It'd be very easy to make Foggy kind of a caricature and just just always the kind of the lighthearted entertainment, but he brings so much kind of soul to it, you know. That, that, uh, what I love about Foggy in our show is that you really see that he struggles with things as well, like he's a very human character. Um, you know, I, I, what I, 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 one of my favorite scenes um, with him was in the flashback episode of season two, uh, season one, I think it was episode 10, and we did a scene where we're at college and we're both drunk and we're walking through the, um, and, uh, and it was just a, you know, like, we were having a, we were, like, we wanted, to, it's for, acting drunk is actually quite hard to do sometimes. So I, I convinced Foggy, I convinced Eldon, before each take, we were going to spin in circles as much as possible, so that when they rolled the camera, we'd be like, off balance and kind of a bit wobbly. Um, and uh, it was really fun until we both started feeling really ill from it, you know? <laughs> But it's, he was just, you know, like all that stuff, he's great. He brings so much spirit, so much heart to it. And he's also really funny, you know? Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> Having a lot of fun until you start to feel ill actually is the being drunk experience, yeah. so that's yeah. perfect, yeah. <laughs> What's up, JJ? Hi. Uh, did you have to do any training in order to learn how to portray a blind character? Yeah, yeah, so, um, you know, that was one of the aspects of this role that I think is really important and very important to get right. Um, and I worked with um, a fellow friend of mine now named Joe Streche, who's been legally blind for 20 years. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just a lot of, like, you know, a lot of uh, walking around the streets, asking him questions, filming him. Um, uh, he took me out in the streets one day and I was blindfolded. Um, and I like to joke, it was a literal example of the blind leading the blind. Um, and, uh, I, I actually, there was one day I was filming him because I wanted to get the cane technique. You know, the, the, way, the way a visually impaired person uses their cane is actually um, a, a very specific way. It's not just random tapping, it, it's, it's done a particular way. And I was practicing and I was filming him and um, someone hit me. <laughs> they thought I was filming him and he didn't know. <laughs> And they were like, that's so rude. I'm like, he's a friend of mine. What, what, what are you, this, we're working together. Yeah. So, um, so that happened. Uh, but yeah, no, and, and you know, like I would, um, I would, I would, I would have him to my house, and I would ask him to do certain things, like, like, like I'd ask him to make something in the kitchen or whatever. Basically, I just had him work for me. <laughs> No, no, no. And so, and I would film him and would just try and like kind of, you know, just learn all the intricacies of what that is like, you know, and what that would be like and how to portray it effectively. You know. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's one of the reasons that Daredevil is such an important show, is that everyone really deserves to see themselves 
represented in the media that they love. Well, see, was maybe the wrong word to use there, but yeah, like to be represented in the media they love. And yeah, and you know, one of the reasons that people have loved Daredevil for a long time is because he's one of the few superheroes who, who is. Um, Who's um, grown up with a disability, and in, and, and in that and in that sense, I mean, like he's he's battled adversity, and the truth is, we we all have, you know, we've all we've all battled, you know, real um, adversity in our life, whether it be a physical disability or an emotional disability or whatever it is, um, and I, you know, I think the the keys, the characters that I like the most are the ones that that you know remind you of the human aspect of or what it is to be alive as much as possible. Yeah. Absolutely. Hi. Hi, Charlie. Uh, so the cast of or the casting had a lot of fun filming Daredevil and the Defenders. So who's the life of the party on the set? <laughs> who's late? The life of the, the, life the, life of the, of the party. party. Oh, the life of the party. Um, uh, wow, well, man. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I love them all. You know what I mean? I like everyone. Um, Rosario Dawson is a lot of fun. Wow. You know, she shows up and she's she's a really good like she's probably one of the big, biggest stars of, on the show. Like comes to the show with, with all of the shows with the most kind of star power, and she's such a kind and humble person. And she knows everyone's name, you know, everyone on the crew, and she's very generous with her spirit and talks to everyone. And I find that a really good example because that's not not all actors are like that. And um, uh, so I find her inspirational in that way because um, she's a huge star, man. You know, she's got, she's busy. You walk through the streets with Rosario, and she, everyone's stopping her every few minutes, and she's she's really kind to everyone. You know, um, so um, yeah, she's she's there. You go, Rosario. Thank you. Rosario Dawson is in my favorite comic book movie of all time, Josie and the Pussycats. <laughs> The other thing, I don't know if you know this, the other thing about Rosario is she's a huge comic book fan, man. Oh. She's, yeah, she's like been in, the, her uncle um, is an artist and he, he got her into it when she was really young and so she knows all the characters, all the backstories, like she's really, like really keen on making sure we get it right, so that helps. That's so interesting. Hi. Hi. Um, speaking of facing adversity, uh, how did you work with the writer, director, incorporating the Catholic faith into the spiritual struggle? It seems pretty real. Well, I'm Catholic, so I kind of get that. <laughs> I kind of get that for free a little bit. You know? Uh, you know, when you get a job as an actor, you, you kind of tend to look at the stuff that you have to work on because you don't know anything about it really. And for me, I know nothing about being a lawyer. Uh, I know nothing about being a superhero. Um, I know, I, I'd never been to the gym in my life. Like I was not a, you know what I mean? True story, you know, I used to uh, not do that. And, um, uh, but the one thing, but uh, you know, I got, a, I got a job and we started filming a month later. So there was certain things I just didn't have time to even address. And I was like, right, the Catholicism, I, I got that. Uh, you know, like the, uh, you know, just like, um, uh, you know, that sense of, um, you know, I, you know again, again, I don't want to be careful what I say here because one's faith is very, very personal and what, what, one, what it means to one person and to another is very different. But, you know, um, I think Matt, from the comics that I've read, that the, 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 draw heavily on his faith. You know, he's some, I think, he, I love that. I, in order to make a compelling show and a compelling character, you, you, you're always looking for something or elements to the character that, are, that pull you in opposite directions, because that's interesting drama. Internal struggle is often quite compelling to watch. And it, in this example, you have such a great opportunity to play someone who believes in God, believes in divine order, uh, believes in God's will, and at the same time, he's kind of playing God. You know, he's kind of, deciding, you know, uh, how, uh, you know, what happens to people in some ways, you know what I mean? Um, uh, similarly, he's also a lawyer and therefore believes in the law, believes in order, believes in the justice system, and then he takes the law into his own hands. And so those, those, um, uh, th th that dichotomy is, is interesting to portray and I think the faith is a massive part of that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi. Hi. My friend and I, before coming here, we're actually re-watching the Daredevil series, and we noticed that you get beat up a lot. <laughs> and you spit out a lot of fake blood, and in our school, our fake blood is actually mint-flavored. We were wondering if your blood is flavored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and 
and uh, you know, we I spat out a lot of fake blood in season in season one. It, and it's sweet. It's not mint, I don't think. It's sweet, though. It's quite sweet. Um, but often, you know, you put it in your mouth, and then it takes a while. They start, they start the camera up. They get the sound rolling. Oh shit! Yeah, I think I swallowed it. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but what was interesting is that I, in season one, I did a lot of that. And then, I, and you know, the, the makeup artist would come up, and she'd squeeze a little bit of the fake bite in my mouth so I could spit it out at the right, right moment. And in season two, John Bernthal showed up, right? And we were doing a scene where we were both getting hit a lot, and we both had fake blood. And I was noticing that he was getting given a lot of fake blood. So I was like, dude, why, do you, why are you getting so much fake blood? He's like, I love this stuff, man. <laughs> and so I, and so I, started, I kind of got jealous a little bit. And I was like, I, I want some more. Like, give me more. <laughs> and, then, and then it goes to the point where we were like both spitting out so much blood. <laughs> The, the director was like, guys, it's, I don't believe it anymore. You know, you gotta, you gotta turn it down on the fake blood. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, thank you. Thank you. That's a great question. Hi. Hi, uh, hi, Charlie. I, first of all, I just want to say thanks so much for coming to our little city out here. It's not very often you get to see characters from like one of your favorite TV shows, so thanks for coming oh, out. Wow, thanks for having me, guys. It's such a, <laughs> such a pleasure. I didn't, know, I didn't know I had to take two flights to get here. I found that out. <laughs> right, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's, yeah. Um, anyway, so I'm kind of like a, I'm a drama student. And so it's just kind of coming from the, like the perspective of like an actress or an actor. Was it like, did you have any slip ups? Because you had to kind of transition into playing this character who was like legally blind, right? Did you ever have any slip ups when you were filming where you were kind of like, oh shoot. I'm supposed to be blind and not making eye contact. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, all the time. And I have um, uh, I have a guy on the set who I, 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 I asked that he watch the monitor and tell. Because the thing about it is, uh, I don't know. It's not that I slip up so much as there's two things that happen. One is sometimes the camera angle, where they put the camera, even though I'm doing my job, like I'm doing what I've learned to do that I feel works, sometimes when the camera is in a certain place, it doesn't read right. And I don't know that until we've already done it. So I have someone watch and try and like tell me if they think it's reading correctly. Like if, they, if, if, if we're shooting a scene and the camera's here, I know, what I'm, I know how to do that. But if they put the camera at a slightly odd angle or like higher or lower and stuff, it, it, it makes it harder to do. So it's, it's, const it's like a movable feast. You're always trying to figure out what the most appropriate way of doing it is. Uh, the, the truth of the matter is, I, if I, when I started the show, I, I, I did what Joe, the guy that I worked with, I did what he does when he talks to me. And what he does is he looks pretty close to my eyes, but not quite. He looks around my mouth and my jaw. I, I imagine he's looking towards the sound, right? But on camera, that doesn't work. On camera, the way camera positions are, that just looks like I'm looking at people. So I have to kind of manipulate it a little bit in order to, for it to read appropriately. So that's the one thing that happens. The other thing that happens is, as you know, with Dead, with Matt Murdock, is that although he is traditionally visually impaired, he, if he's on his own or he's with people who know that he's dead, well, he never has to look at anything to pick it up or whatever. So if there's a scene where I have to pick up that bottle, I would never, Matt would never have to look to see it, right? He would just pick it up like that. But I can't do that every time. <laughs> like I, I knock shit over and stuff. <laughs> So there's, uh, there's often like we have to do a lot of retakes because I'm like, hey, let me grab that. And it goes everywhere, you know what I mean? So, um, uh, but we get to do cool stuff with like that. There was a, there was a cool, one of my favorite moments is in season one, episode four, one of the first, one of the scenes with Rosario Dawson where she's been stitching up my arm and then she, th she throws me my shirt to put on. But the way the scene worked out, she was standing behind me when she throws the shirt. So I was like, ah, oh, that's gonna be tricky. How are we gonna do that? So we had to have a guy, because what I wanted, I thought it was a really cool daredevil moment, right? So she would throw the shirt and I would just grab it without looking. But that's, you know, hard. So, so we would do the scene up until that point and we'd say the lines like, and they'd be filming it. And then we'd have another guy who, when it got ready, he would go, three, two, one, now. And I would go like that. And like, it did it like 15 times and we finally got it, you know what I mean? So we waste a lot of time with that stuff. I think it's worth it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I kind of have a
have a dumb question for you, um, but my friend and I... Unlike the mouth blood one? <laughs> that is my friend, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> Many questions, but we were debating on like the three hour drive up here about Daredevil and his abilities. And you landed on mouth blood? <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, was a good question. Okay. we also landed on um, Daredevil's ability and if he would be able to smell like how cooked a steak is. <laughs> yeah, like if it's like rare, well done. Oh, yeah. Well, did you, did, did you see, did you watch Defenders yet? Yeah. So there's that, you know, we did that, we added that, that was actually in the script, that was something we added on the day, where uh, Iron Fist goes, are they pork? As, the, as on episode four, when the, uh, when the dumplings come out. And, um, and on the day I was like, just FYI, I, I would know if they were pork. I would be able to smell if it was pork. So we actually, the writer was there and we, he added it. And we added that scene where he's like, are they pork? I'm like, nah, that, that's shrimp. Oh wait, those are pork. That was you know, like a fun, cool moment. So yeah, yeah, but he would definitely be able to smell. That's, that's one of the things that I want to try and do more of with the character is like, is, is but it, is display, is show how he, through sense of smell, that he would be able to d determine things. The only problem is, it's a little bit gimmicky sometimes when you're acting to go, <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you wouldn't really do that. Yeah. And you know, like he would not have to do that in order to know what something smells like. Like if, you, if someone farts, you don't really go, <laughs> you know what I mean? Thank you. Thank you. Hi. You kind of mentioned before how there's Matt Murdock and then there's Daredevil, how they're almost kind of two separate people. Yeah. Like they're trying to separate themselves, right? Um, as an actor, how were you able to kind of get in the mindset of Daredevil, like before a really intense action scene, let's say, or a really violent scene? Uh, yeah, was there like anything you did or you tried to do? So I, I actually didn't land on that in the end. Like, there was a, that was something I thought about a lot before we started filming, but in the end I decided that they're not, they're not different people. Um, what I decided is that, we, we talked about it a little bit, is that Daredevil, Matt is a little bit of a kind of, is a little bit like an alcoholic insofar as he, he's pretty, he's pretty um, rational until he has the, f the first drink, as it were, and then, and then he kind of can't control himself. Um, that's a horrible stereotype for an alcoholic, it's just, it, it, but it is a, a, my version of the stereotype for it. So with Matt, I kind of feel like he, he has good intentions when he puts on the suit, but once he goes out, he kind of loses himself a little bit and he can't stop. So he, can, he can't, and he gets to the point where he can't guarantee that what he's gonna do. He doesn't know what, what he, how far he's gonna take it. He can't control himself. And I felt, I thought that was kind of an interesting way to be a superhero, to be someone whose intention is good, but there's this, there's this other side of him that he doesn't, he, he, has, he kind of blacks out, you know, and he has no idea what he did and how, he, how far he took it. And, and, and it leads to the question of, is he taking it too far? You know, one of the things that I think was quite shocking, people who love superhero genre stuff, one of the things that I loved when I read the script, the first script, that I think is quite shocking is, in the first action sequence of the entire show, he's in the shipyard and he's beating up some bad guys. And we, you know they're bad guys, they're, 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 um, they've, um, they're, they've got some, they've like cap, cap, captured some women or something, or they're like, they're like, uh, I can't remember exactly what's happening, but something's happening now. And, uh, <laughs> no, you got it, you got it, that was yeah, right. Yeah. And then at the end of the scene, he gets the bad guy, he knocks him out. And then he keeps hitting him, and he keeps hitting him, and he keeps hitting him. And that's not something we've seen with the super, superhero genre much, because it's sinister. There's something dark about that. That guy is out. You know what I mean? And so, um, you know, and I, I kind of find it funny a little bit because one of the things, the line that we don't cross with Daredevil, we haven't crossed really, is we, he, that he doesn't kill, right? But I always find that really kind of weird because he often puts himself in a position where he's kind of lucky that they didn't die, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, there's like, there was a scene where, you know, he had this scene episode two of season one, he pushes the guy off the, off the, the, the building. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he didn't know that guy wasn't going to live, you know, it wasn't going to die, so. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, as one of the only defenders that wears like a costume or uniform, how does it feel being just the silly guy in a outfit? 
I think it's cool, man. I don't know about you. The cast doesn't give you hell whatsoever. Yeah, you know, they like to make fun of it, but I think they're jealous. Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, hey, you look stupid, but you're mad, not really. Yeah. No, man, look, you, you know, you... Uh, uh, <laughs> Better than the Ben Affleck version, right? That's super yeah. bad. Yeah. And wait, for, the, for the record, for the record, Ben Affleck, I thought, made a great Matt Murdock. I loved his dad. I thought it was fantastic. That soup was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I felt like you could hear that one squeak, you know? So sweaty. Not breathable, really, yet. No, good question, man. Yeah, they do like to make jokes, but they're jealous. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Charlie. With um, Daredevil being such a realistic um, street-level hero, and with so many problems similar in the show happening in real life all the time, do you feel a responsibility to kind of bring hope to people um, when you portray Matt Murdock as a lawyer, Daredevil as a hero? Uh, good question. Um, uh, I, I'm not. I'm not sure that that's my job. Um, you, you know, inevitably, as an actor, when you play characters, and particularly when you play characters for a long time, I've been doing this for three years now. This one character, um, you do become attached emotionally to. You, you know, I have a lot of love for Matt, and I feel like I know him. It's a weird to speak about him in that sense because I kind of am him, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I, who that person is is not who I am. And you do that you do feel quite affectionate towards the, that person. Um, and so one of the things that I think is really important is to never lose sight of their flaws. You know, I th actually think it's it's people's flaws that draw humans to one another. We, we you know, who likes it? someone who's perfect? No one, right? You, like, you, we, I, I think we're, like, the things you love the most about the people that you love are often their flaws, right? So, uh, it's important to never forget that. Like, I try to never forget that Matt is very stubborn at times, and he has a real temper, and he's not the best friend, always. Um, that also makes him a great superhero in many ways, because he's single-minded. Um, uh, and he cares about the greater good rather than the people that he loves the most, you know? I think that make, that's a very... Uh, it's a very um, uh, enviable trait, uh, <clears throat> but um, I don't think it's my job to, to try and bring hope to fans or to viewers or audience members. I think that's the writer's job. You know, my job is to read the scripts and to try and put on screen what they intended um, and to be as true to the character as possible. And hopefully, if the show is written well, which I happen to think this one really is. Um, then you know you will you will feel hopeful when you watch it because you see a real life you know and real life in in its nature is is devastating and sad and scary and frightening but also hopeful you know thanks for a great question Woo! thank you hi uh, so all of us in this room are really big fans of yours yes yeah. well one is. <laughs> here at the Edmonton Expo that you are really big fan of? That I'm, that I'm what? That, uh, are there any other he guests here at the Edmonton Expo that you are a fan of? Oh yeah, man. I love, that's one of the great things about coming to these things is, you know, I get to sit, I get to get, sit in a green, I get to be a VIP, right? And sit in a green room with the big stars, you know? And it's funny because I, I, I have to like try and be cool, you know? <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I think Anthony Mackie is fantastic, man. I love <laughs> I met him years ago, and I, have, I met him in like 2003, and, and I was just starting out, and he'd done a few things, and I remember being so impressed with him then, and I, I saw him for the first time yesterday, um, and so that was really exciting. Um, uh, yeah, Gene Simmons is here. Yeah. That's nuts, right? I just had, I just sit having lunch with Gene Simmons a minute ago. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't sitting at his table, but when I tell it, I will be sitting at his table. <laughs> So yeah, great question. You know, it's, it's great to meet everyone that you know that shows up. You know. Thank you.
think this is going to be our last question from an audience member for today. So, no pressure. Uh, There's a lot of pressure, you know. <laughs> uh, hi, big fan. Uh, you said in your interview you'd like to do a Born Again adaptation in Daredevil. Woo! Uh, are there other any storylines you'd like to like do in future seasons of Daredevil? Yeah, no, I got to be careful here again because uh, you know um, I get in trouble. Uh, it's not so much. I actually don't want to do that. Like I don't want to do a story start to finish. And I, one of the reasons I don't want to do that is because I think the point of the show is that for the, the the fans of the Daredevil comics, our show should not be a foregone conclusion. You know, one of the reasons in season one they killed off Ben Urich, which is a great shame, is because we did we, we needed to. I think the show needs to do something so that real fans who've read every comic of Daredevil don't feel safe. You know, if we start doing Born Again, then they know what happens, you know what I mean? And so we need to do, uh, I like it when we have like moments that are like an homage to, a, to, an, uh, to a, a, a comic. Like episode three of season two was the, uh, you know, Punisher um, Daredevil rooftop sequence, which is taken almost directly out of one of the comics. Um, and then there's another moment in that ep episode actually where he, where Matt Murdock has a gun taped to him and he, he's holding it up and he smiles and there's the cover of 184, No, no More Mr. Nice Guy, right? So I love those moments, those little like Easter eggs that, that are almost taken directly out and, is a, and you, you know when we, we know when we film them that certain fans, but not everyone is going to be like, oh, wicked, that's so cool. And, and I'm slowly becoming that guy as well, like I get really excited when that stuff happens. Um, but I also want our show to be its own thing, you know, and it, and it to have its own kind of like its own genre and its own feel and be and be almost like a continuation of the comics, but it just happens to be in video form. You know? So what can we expect next from you? <laughs> Not necessarily Daredevil related. But yeah. Well, the good news is I have. I, I, although we know we will be doing season three, we haven't started shooting. Yet. I don't know when we will, but hopefully soon. But I haven't read any scripts, so I have no idea what is going to happen. Um, but I'm very excited. I, can't, I have lots of opinions and thoughts and hopes and dreams for it. Um, and I've made some notes from you guys. Um, uh, people have come up to me and, and it's funny when you get that, man. It's really funny when people like give you their advice because like, thanks, but you know, <laughs> what am I going to do? Call Marvel and be like, so Joe from, you know. Let me hear you up with this. <laughs> uh, Eldon told me a funny story about how he, he gets people come up to him and they're like, oh, dude, you're foggy from Daredevil, that's so cool. And he's like, oh, thanks, man. And then they're like, but why did you get so mad at your friend when you found out he was a superhero? <laughs> like, that's so cool, man. You should be psyched for him. Like, why were you a dick about it? And, <laughs> and, and I was like, yeah, man, I don't write it. You know, just, yeah. Is there any last words you want to say to your fans here in Edmonton no, today? I mean, like, just guys, it's, it's, it's such an honor to be here, guys, and like, uh, it's, I gotta say, man, like, come, coming out and seeing where you guys sat here, I feel really, you know, inadequate, like, I hope I say something interesting. Um, so, it's really nice that you guys come out, and I hope, uh, I hope you continue to like the show, and... Woo!